Jim Beattie's reputation as a polarizing figure is beyond dispute. While many regarded him as a forward thinker, others had fewer flattering opinions. What's clear, however, is that during the 1970s, Jim BD generated both excitement and disappointments among numerous pilots. Despite his challenges in fulfilling promises, his likable nature and undeniable charisma were hard to ignore. In this world, some individuals naturally possess an inclination towards grand thinking. It's uncertain if this mindset is fostered from childhood by supportive and empowering parents, or if they are born with an inherent drive to relentlessly challenge every obstacle they face in life, leaping boldly into each new venture with little hesitation. These individuals come into the world with a readiness to embrace risks. Many of them fail spectacularly, and we, the majority who prefer safety, often judge them harshly and vocally, feeling justified in doing so. Some of these risk takers are affected by these public criticisms choosing thereafter to conform strictly without straying or aspiring for more. Yet, there are a few resilient ones who, despite repeated setbacks and learning from their failures, eventually triumph. Their success results in innovative and desirable creations that benefit everyone. Our world becomes safer, more connected, more enjoyable, and seemingly smaller, thanks to the bold and daring efforts of these individuals. None of those individuals have an impeccable life. Consider the case of Jim B.D. Sr., an aircraft engineer, designer, and fabricator. He represents one of the many traditionally educated aircraft engineers that emerged from American universities in the 1950s. These engineers were tasked with a critical mission, to help the USA counter its biggest adversary at the time, the Soviet threat, recall the era of Sputnik. BD contributed to this endeavor at North American Aviation, engaging in projects like the F-4, F-100, and A-3 Vigilante. By 1961, a young BD was ready to explore new ventures. A strong advocate for light aircraft, he joined forces with his father and friends Don Keck, Larry Schneider, and Dick Jimenez to create an airplane accessible to the average person. His aim was to design an aircraft that was not just easy to fly, but also affordable to purchase. The BD-1 emerged as a kit aircraft, a concept not widely pursued at the time, despite the abundance of aircraft plans available. This aircraft consisted of 385 unique parts, with 175 of them being interchangeable. These interchangeable components were crucial for keeping manufacturing costs low and simplifying the assembly process. The aircraft utilized a novel technique in light aviation, bonding to join its large components. Around 1964, BD showcased this method to Kevin Brown, a writer for Popular Mechanics. Brown was impressed by the speed at which the structural parts could be assembled in a jig and bonded using phenolic and epoxy resins. The aircraft featured a distinctive tubular spar known for its strength and for its floor, bulkhead, and cockpit sidewalls as well as the rear bulkheads, it employed lightweight honeycomb aluminium, which was considered advanced for that era. BD envisioned offering a variety of engines for what he promoted as an aircraft suitable for everyone. The projected speeds at 65% power were estimated to be between 112 miles per hour and 145 miles per hour. The design of the wings featured a quick disconnect mechanism for easy home storage. Additionally, the engine was designed with a swing-away cowling, providing mechanics with fast and comprehensive access. It appeared that he had considered every detail. BD's plans extended beyond just producing aircraft kits. He envisaged a comprehensive sales and service center, along with a flight training facility at the nearby airport in Springfield, Ohio. This concept seemed highly promising on paper, attracting early investors who were keen to advance the kit into full production as a 14 CFR Part 23 certified airplane. However, as often happens, progress slowed down. Fulfilling promises took longer and required more funding than initially expected. In 1965, Fred Lemon, an industrialist from Cleveland, stepped in. He successfully took over the project and established a new company, American Aviation, which later became part of Grumman. The airplane underwent several key modifications and was produced without further input from BD, known as the AA-1. Later, under Grumman, it evolved into its more powerful variants. 
which are still admired today as the Grumman Yankees, Travelers and Tigers. By May 1969, BD once again featured in popular mechanics, with Brown covering the BD-4 kit aircraft. Brown's appreciation for the aircraft was evident in his writing. While the BD-4 lacked the flashy appeal of the earlier BD-1, it was notably easy to build, largely thanks to BD's meticulously detailed plans. Popular Mechanics was so impressed with the aircraft that it agreed to sell the plans on BD's behalf for $30 each at the time. The BD-4 introduced new technologies, such as plastic wingskin panels that could be easily slipped over the frame and bonded in place, significantly reducing the time spent on riveting or rib stitching. The article highlighted, BD's newest airplane is the easiest to construct yet. The wings come ready-made and most of the fuselage just bolts together. The BD-4 could reach a speed of 166 miles per hour when equipped with a 150 horsepower engine. As for its handling, it was known for its stability and ease of control, making it a popular choice among amateur builders and pilots. The standout feature of the BD-4 was its unique assembly process, where its parts were delivered to the purchaser in seven separate kits, priced at $2,940 in total, excluding the engine. BD would later reflect on this aspect, emphasizing the BD-4 status as one of the first true home-built kit aircraft. He expressed initial uncertainty about how closely builders would adhere to the plans, which led him to design the structure to be almost fail-safe. For instance, he included more screws in many parts of the aircraft than were necessary just for meeting structural requirements. He jokingly remarked that the design was so straightforward and reliable that even an aeronautical engineer could successfully build it from scratch. This approach proved successful with kits being sold and generating revenue for BD's next ambitious project, a design that would ultimately define and challenge him, the BD-5. In the 1970s, amidst a turbulent era marked by events like the Nixon presidency and an ongoing recession, an intriguing development took place in Newton, Kansas, involving BD aircraft. The dedication of the employees and the talent brought in by BD including notable figures like Bert Rutan and FAA inspector Les Bourbon, was remarkable. BD was redefining the BD-5, an aircraft designed for the average person, following the success of over 800 BD-4 kits sold. The BD-5, resembling a miniature fighter jet, captivated many with its unique design and responsive control, including a novel side-stick control. Despite its impressive performance, there was skepticism about BD's ability to commercialize it, with media doubts and claims of it being challenging to pilot. To counter this, BD showcased its ease of handling at air shows, including demonstrations by a range of pilots. BD's showmanship and infectious enthusiasm drew significant attention, leading to thousands placing deposits for the BD-5 kit. However, the project faced challenges. BD's approach was similar to other prominent aircraft designers from the 1950s to the 1970s. Like Beach and Cessna, they all wanted to keep refining their designs, which delayed their market release. Walter Beach and his wife, Olive Ann, who managed the company and urged him to finalize a production prototype, leaving improvements for later. Clyde Cessna's wife brought in her nephew, Dwayne Wallace, for a similar role. BD was certainly on the radar of these larger manufacturers who even consulted him quietly on some of their own challenges. If BD had resolved the BD-5's piston engine and drivetrain issues before running out of funds, he might have been a significant player in the light plane market during the 1980s. BD was known for his generosity with his time and that of his staff, always willing to assist his kit customers with their problems. His customers greatly appreciated this, and he was also adept at promoting his products. However, BD's skills as a businessman were lacking. He struggled with managing cash flow and lacked someone to effectively push him towards production. He continuously refined the aircraft, aiming to shift from a kit to full production, all while cycling through various engine manufacturers in search of a suitable engine. Pilots who had experience with the Hearth engine often joked that the aircraft was an excellent glider. While kits were being shipped, many were still awaiting engines and other parts. BD's sudden need for a large volume of materials overwhelmed his suppliers. As for the number of kits distributed, estimates suggest that it could be as high as 5,000. Eventually, a suitable engine was found, 
The Zenoa engine from Japan, a three-cylinder, two-stroke engine, which was outstanding. The engine was remarkably fuel efficient, consuming fuel at 1.8 GPH at full throttle, a significant improvement over the BD-5J's fuel consumption, which offered about 40 minutes of flight time with reserves. That engine was exactly what the BD-5 needed, affordable and cutting edge, everything Jim wanted. BD was also developing a variable pitch propeller specifically for this engine, featuring different settings for takeoff, high cruise, low cruise and feathering. Unfortunately, this breakthrough arrived too late to save the company. A substantial amount of money was lost, including BD's personal funds and that of others. By 1979, bankruptcy proceedings culminated in an FTC decree that prohibited BD from taking deposits for any product for 10 years. He complied with this agreement. However, he remained active during this period, developing several efficient land vehicles with his cousin and started to conceptualize and sketch out something entirely different. Shortly after the expiration of the 10-year restriction in 1989, BD made a comeback with yet another innovative aircraft design. This time, he began with a reliable engine, the General Electric CJ610 turbojet, which produced 2,950 pounds of thrust. Drawing on his experience from North American aviation, he aimed to create the ultimate aircraft for pilots. The result was an aircraft that resembled a smaller version of the F-15, capturing the essence of a dream aircraft. BD's new creation impressed many. He planned to offer the BD-10J kit, excluding the engine, for approximately $160,000. The projected capabilities of the aircraft were astounding, with designs indicating it could reach Mach 1.4. At the time, three of these aircraft were being built in Mojave, California, intended for the airshow scene. The aircraft flew like a fighter jet, capable of rapidly ascending from a standstill on the runway to 29,000 feet in just six minutes. The airplane was a joy to fly, but general aviation pilots would need considerable training and practice to handle the BD-10J's remarkable performance. BD himself acknowledged that the airplane would serve a specific market. However, by then, the concept of marketing a complex aircraft like the BD-10J was appearing increasingly challenging. The FAA couldn't figure out how to certify the jet as a home-built aircraft, but the FAA wasn't the sole challenge facing the BD-10J program. The aircraft also experienced initial problems. In 1994, a prototype was flown to the Reno Air Races to drum up business. During this flight, the skinning on the vertical stabilizers demonstrated some wrinkling, indicating excessive flex. The problem was considered minor, and later that year, a stronger tail design was added. Despite this modification, the aircraft broke up mid-air when the vertical stabilizers failed due to a crossflow condition. The NTSB's report raised doubts about the adequacy of this solution. Consequently, the reputation of the aircraft became tarnished. Potential deals with the Canadian and Portuguese militaries fell through, and by 1997, BD Jet declared bankruptcy. During the 1990s, Jim BD worked on several small aircraft designs, but it was the involvement of his son, Jim BD Jr., in managing BD Corp's business operations that brought stability to the company. BD Jr., with his newfound passion for aviation and understanding of its financial challenges, helped the company navigate the 2008 to 2012 recession, maintaining its presence in the industry despite widespread struggles. BD Corp thrived partly due to Jim BD Sr.'s innovative designs, particularly in the light sport aircraft LSA category, including the simple and easy to fly BD 17 introduced in 2000. Experienced pilots praised it for its ease of assembly and maintenance. Collaborators remembered him for his creativity, dedication to family, and significant contributions to aviation. Following BD Senior's passing, BD Junior honored his legacy by starting a foundation to support aviation education, refurbishing and donating abandoned kits to STEM programs in schools, sparking students' interest in aircraft building. Currently, BD Corp offers several aircraft models for sale. This includes the BD-17L, an experimental light sports aircraft, ELSA, alongside the BD-4C, an updated variant of the BD-4, and the BD-6, a single-seat version of the BD-4 that was originally designed in the 1970s. 
If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and ring that notification bell to stay updated on our latest posts. Thank you for your support.